Hey guys, good to see everybody again, and ooh, do I have a feeling a lot of y'all are gonna be surprised to learn what I've learned that I'm gonna share with you today. So let me try to capture y'all's attention right out of the gate. 162 shots at 30 foot-pounds, 278 shots at 23 foot-pounds, or 419 shots per fill at 19 foot-pounds of energy. 40 plus foot pounds capable and I did my own tune where I achieved 38 foot pounds of energy by 45 shots out of a 177 caliber air gun. Holy crap. <laughs> I I guys, I got to tell you, you know, this is not new technology. This has been out for 18 years or so, 2002. And I, I kind of feel like I've been living under a rock with my head in the sand or like a caveman because I, I feel like people just don't know about this tech or, or the tech is so expensive that it's out of reach for most people and that is entirely possible as well. But this here is the Daystate Red Wolf. It comes to us from England. It is an all electronic air gun. And when I say all electronic, I mean all electronic regulator, valve, trigger, the whole deal. So I'm going to give you an overview of what it is, and then I'm going to share with you what I've learned about it so far, which is a lot, and then I'm going to show you how to tune it, which is incredibly easy, and I have to say I had really good results and a lot of fun doing that. All right, so what is the Daystate Red Wolf? Well, like I said, it comes to us for England, from England, um, it's available in 177, 22, 25, 303, where some of these things are making like 80, 90 foot pounds of energy, which is crazy. Like I said, this one's in 177. I've been able to generate over 40 foot pounds of energy with, with it. And to put that in perspective, for some of you guys that are new, you know, when I go out and review a 22 cal brake barrel, you know, I'm at like 15, 16, set, that, that Gamo Swarm Maxim, that was like 15 or so foot-pounds of energy. You know, a little 177 caliber brake barrel, even these ultra high velocity crazy ones, 15, 16, 17, 18 foot-pounds of energy. So this is kind of a big deal, especially when you take into consideration the ballistic coefficient in the aerodynamic cross section of a little 177 caliber pellet. I don't know yet, but I have a strong feeling that when we get this out to 50 and 100 yards, which by the way, if you're new here, this is not my primary YouTube channel. This is an offshoot or a school or a classroom of the Aragon Exploration and Advancement Channel, also called AEAC Home. All the final full reviews, reviews, all the final full reviews You'll see over there, but this here is more one-on-one -on -one classroom where I can really dig in and share with you guys what I've learned after spending like two weeks with this bad boy, okay? But um, you're in the $2,800 price point here. Okay, pause and just grasp that, right? But at the same time, you're also looking at a gun that is very capable, very easy to tune has an extraordinary bandwidth when it comes to control over that tune and power is easy to do, and even has three onboard selectable power settings, a low, medium, and high, which is what I shared with you earlier, that 19 foot-pounds, 23 foot-pounds, uh, 30 foot-pounds, and I even made my own, like I said, at 38 foot-pounds, and saw a high of 40. Okay, so when you take that into consideration and that really like Y'all that are video gamers out there, this is like an air gun video game. It, it truly is. It's, it's miraculous from the way it interfaces with me or you guys, the user, right down to um, how, how you tell it what you want it to do. And we're, I'm going to show you all that today, so, so don't worry. Um, I mentioned the calibers that it comes in. Uh, it comes in a, a red stock, like you see here, laminate. It comes in a blue laminate. It comes in a walnut. Weight, you're talking 8.7 pounds by itself without the scope mounts or additional moderator. And as you see it here, all rigged up in a full 480cc carbon fiber bottle of air, which is 250 bar fillable, by the way. I'm right at 10.9 pounds, so it's not light. You know, I want to 
pause here, you know, in this kind of overview, a gun that is capable of this much performance in such a broad range is really deserving of a lightweight or some kind of skeleton stock day state. And maybe that's what they've done with their new, um, is it called the Airwolf or something like that? Delta Wolf, with their new Delta Wolf that was just released, and, and maybe this is a dinosaur now, but to me, this is no dinosaur. This has been mind-blowing and, uh, and, uh, and eye-opening. But uh, you are, it's a 45-inch gun, okay, with the, uh, with the zero dB moderator on the end, you're right at 51 inches. Um, it's got an adjustable cheek piece, an adjustable comb. The trigger, like I said, is all electronic, and it is phenomenal. Um, it came out of the box breaking at five ounces, okay? And, um, and it's all adjustable. You have adjustments for first stage travel and pull. You've got adjustments for second, or let, me, let me start that over again. You have adjustments for first stage travel and weight. You have adjustments for second stage travel, weight, and break weight, or second stage travel and weight. And you can even adjust the, um, the height and the cant of the, uh, of the blade itself, all right? And, you know, I, I wasn't sure at first about the electronic trigger. I, I've used it before in the Pulsar. I've used it before, and, and, um, and I think the Pulsar is the only time I've done that. I might have done a couple of Pulsar reviews. I'm getting old. It's hard to remember these things. But it's, it's um, I think that, that it has the potential to freak a lot of people out because it's all electronic, but, it, guys, it, it feels like a normal match-grade trigger, and it, it feels good. I, I can't tell. It just, it just worked for me. It was don't know what else to say about that. Um, 480cc carbon fiber bottle, 250 bar fillable. The barrel, let's talk about that for a second. So this is a Lothar Walther all stainless steel polygonal match grade uh, barrel in 177 cal. And um, I guess I'll start getting into what I learned about it. The thing that was extraordinary to me is I put like 1,500 shots through here, um, pushing some pellets and slugs to some really high velocities. And, um, and I was like clean in three patches, four or five patches. And you know, that polygonal design doesn't really, the rifling isn't so much where it bites into the pellet so hard. So there was really no mess to clean up in here. And what that means to me and what that'll mean to you is you can push some high velocities in here, and at least in my case, I've got over 5,000 shots through this gun. Um, I didn't have any challenges with uh, with any kind of fouling or letting. I was pulling patches through, and there's like I had like one little 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 fleck of of lead, and I couldn't get anything out other than that. And and for me in my world, that's very unusual, especially with these Lothar Walther match grades. Now. This is not an off-the-shelf polygonal Lothar Walther match grade. It's built to Daystate's custom specifications for this gun. And we're going to get into the, uh, the ammunitions and stuff that it, that it likes. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's easy access, too. To, to clean it, all you got to do, and, and I'll take this stock off later so you guys can see how to do it, but you just remove this one 8mm bolt, remove the battery before you try to take the stock off, and then there's uh, two little grub screws on either side of the barrel. Whoa, almost broke that. Holding on the, um, the true carbon fiber bottle or carbon fiber barrel, and then it just slides right off. And then if you want to remove the barrel itself from the receiver, you do all of that, and then there's two little uh, or, or three grub screws on top of the receiver, back those out, and you, and you can slide it right out. But I didn't find that that was necessary at all for cleaning and servicing. It was really easy to get to um, otherwise, uh, the cocking arm. So it's all electronic, right? So there's not a spring in here. There's no spring to compress for a hammer. So that's literally how you cock the gun. There was a point where I, I had this thing set up like this in its stand when I was doing shot charts. I did those all myself, by the way. So that's legit. And, um, I was just, here, let me make sure that it's on here. The safety, by the way, you know, a safety that we're used to usually, 
interferes some way with the you know the pulling of the trigger this is not that this is the safety on this gun is literally like an on off switch for a phone or a tv or a computer if it's not turned on it's not going to fire so turn on the safety and you touch the trigger so i was sitting there doing my shot charts literally like this <laughs> i mean when you got to do like 400 of these things and at like 30 foot pounds, they're literally all going in the same hole at like 25 yards. I had like three or 400 shots like you could put like on a pinky. And then I started getting a little bit sloppy and whatever. But that's kind of the video game. That, that really surprised me. Um, it's very settled in its shot cycle. It's really crisp as a whip, which I think th feel like contributed to, uh, to accuracy. Um, let me show you. So I mentioned earlier there are three stored onboard tunes on this rifle that will be user selectable by you and they're really easily accessible it comes out of the factory tuned with a low medium and high that was 19 foot pounds 23 foot pounds and 30 it's a little kind of a funny story so these shot charts that I gave you I also kind of I wound up doing them each in a certain pellet the um, the low power 19 foot pound shot chart I did in the Air Arms 10.3 grain. I like these a little bit better than the JSB 1034s for whatever reason. So this is what I'm going with. The medium power I did with the 1343 JSB Monsters. God, it sounds like we're talking about 22 cal pellets, but we're not here. And the high power shot charts I did in the 16.20 grain JSB. Ooh, excuse me, beasts. All right, so. Um, I, I, I stumbled upon that each through a lot of due diligence that each of these power levels absolutely loved one of these pellets. And I was on the phone with Day State England asking them some questions about tuning and which I'll share with you the answers to those in a little bit. And, um, and I, I said to him, I'm like, you know, this is like the craziest thing. Your gun loves the JSB 10 three on low power and it loves the JSB 1343 on medium power and it loves the JSB 1620 on high power and they're like yeah that's because we tuned it like that we tuned it for, for those three pellets and I'm like well that makes a lot of sense so just to kind of put this bug in your ear guys this comes to you this will come to you tuned like a formula one race car all right so it's going to be hard for you to improve upon the factory tunes because they've done so much due diligence with this um to kind of paint a picture picture for you, this is this technology has been sold, been being sold by Daystate since 2002, so it's not new. But the guy that's been at the helm of all the tuning has been at Daystate for 35 years. His name is Alan Deville, and he has a nephew, Robert Deville, who's been his protege for about 10. But Alan, you know, he's he's been the tip of the spear when it came to the research, the development, the learning, the testing, and tuning all these guns in day state england and so he is the guy that tunes every single one of these things before they leave the factory if he has a day off or he's on vacation his protege robert uh, does the tuning but it's always those two guys and they've done we're going to circle back to this but they've done all of the hard work for you so you don't have to tune this you can buy this and enjoy this at an extremely high level just on that low, medium, and power that they've set up for you. I mean, it's an extraordinary gun as is. But the cool part is they've done all the hard work, so if you want to go in and do your own tuning, there's really only one or two parameters you have to mess with in all of it and all of this to have great success. And I'll share with you how I did that, and I'll share with you the great success that I had. So I wanted to give you all that as a blanketing statement because I know you're probably thinking, well, I don't know, you know, this looks this looks pretty intimidating and all those numbers look pretty intimidating. Guys, let me just tell you, as much as I love tuning FXs, as much as I love doing that Avenger tuning guide for y'all, that was so good for me to learn how to do that. This is just as much fun, but like a video game or a cell phone or a computer, it's crazy, stupid, easy, and fast. And you know, unlike manually tuning a regulator or a valve or a hammer spring, these type of things, you know, and, and you were in a good spot and then you changed it in search of another good spot. You know, you, with this, you just write down the good spot you learned 
And literally like in one minute, literally one minute or less, you can go right back to it. So that, that's, that's the thing that's kind of freaking me out about this tech where like I knew of it, I knew it was performing, you know, in, in, in the events where there's a lot big money on the line, like EBR and RMAC and Pier, Pyramid Air Cup and stuff like that. But I didn't know that it was so user friendly. And, you know, I feel like I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but I feel like if Daystate could make this technology affordable the way like Android or Samsung or Android or LG or HTC or iPhone has with all their phones, this is the type of thing where everybody on planet Earth would and should own one. And I sincerely feel that way. You know, at 2,800 bucks, the air gets awful thin up there around three grand. And, um, you know, so not everybody is going to be able to enjoy it, but not saying it ain't worth that because right now there's nothing else on the market that I've seen that can, that can do this and can interface with the user so easily and so repeatably, um, you know, to where it's, 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 it's like, it's like having an, it's not like having an app because this is like, this is like Braille and don't worry, I'm going to post this. This is a quick guide as far as how to access and change you know, these, these few parameters that I want to talk to you about, and I'm probably going to post a picture of that on Airgun Nation or whatever, but uh, we'll get back to that, and it's easy and quick, and, and I'll show it to you. All right, so, so yeah, so there's that. So the technology, um, Daystate calls it MCT and GCU. MCT stands for Map Compensating Technology, okay, which basically means the computer is going to do the work for you of giving you what you want when you give it some basic parameters and giving you what you want at a very high level of consistency and, and performance, okay? Uh, the, G, the GCU is like the motherboard. It kind of controls the actuator and the capacitors and that electronic hammer smack in the valve and the trigger and the cocking. And try not to take out the light this time. And the, the, three, select, the three selectable power levels that you've got right here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It just takes a second or so to access each of them and um, you know so it's an all electronic deal there's a battery in the handle I'm going to show you how to access it and um, might as well show you this so the gun will ship with a battery charger okay this one came with uh, European prongs okay so you're going to need yourself an adapter don't know what that's all about but this is America and in America they really need to send the user one of these guys with a, um, especially at this price point, one of these guys uh, so that they can charge the, uh, the onboard battery. But you simply plug the onboard battery right into there and uh, you charge away. The little lights tell you uh, where you are in your charge cycle. And, uh, but you know, get yourself an adapter. You can plug it into your wall here in the States. So as long as we're kind of talking about that battery, I'm thinking what y'all probably thought, right? Y'all are probably thinking two things. Well, what happens if I get it wet? And what happens if I run out of battery, right? And we're going to touch on that. So the running out of the battery, so I pretty much got done with all my work. Had about 5,000 shots through the gun, and I'm thinking to myself, man, that battery has got to be getting low. I hadn't gotten any warnings or low battery deals on my little readout over here. So I plug it into the charger, and the thing's full. In like five minutes, it's like charged, and I'm like, holy crap. So I don't know how to extrapolate that out, but I'm guessing 10, 15, probably 20,000 shots out of a single charge on a battery. Spare batteries are 50 bucks, but why bother, right? So that was, um, that was a bit of, of a surprise. So being all electronic and us being gun guys, I'm an air gunner. I like powder burning firearms as well. So the thing I thought to myself was, well, it's all electronic. Can I, can I use this? Is this just a wall hogger? Is this just something that I'm going to be using, you know, in bench rest competitions? Or can I take this out and use it as a hunting tool in the wet? Because, you know, a PCP, a brake barrel, we're going to take that out and hunt with it in the wet. A powder burning firearm, we're going to do the same thing, right? So we want to make sure that it's going to work for us. Well, long and short of that story, I started doing some digging and air gun, air gun, air gunner magazine out of the UK K actually did an article uh, in June of this year. I guess they were timed out for COVID and they're like dunking this thing in like a swimming pool. There's an article in here showing them like, um, um, 
you know, just outside in the misting and the wet. So I called, I called the factory in England and I'm like, hey, you know, is this thing like really that waterproof? They're like, oh yeah. They're like, first they had a little fun with me and they're like, dude, it was developed in the United Kingdom. It rains here like, it's cold and wet here like every day. What do you think? Ha ha ha. But then they started getting serious and they, and they said, God, Steve, we've had that thing at the bottom of swimming pools. We left it in a, in a fish tank aquarium overnight. We've, um, we even walked, we, we, we were filming some, some kind of marketing deal where we had a guy pop out of a pond and like shoot the thing and he dropped it at one point and it took us a while to find it on the bottom of the pond. Then he came up again and shot it some more. So it's waterproof, okay? But it's not waterproof like a submarine would be waterproof, okay? It's waterproof the way a powder burning firearm would be waterproof. Where if you get it soaking wet, when you're done with it for the day, you better take it apart and let it dry. Take it apart and let it dry out and do your oiling and due diligence and clean it up. It's that sort of thing. The way it achieves that is it's not like the circuit board's encapsulated in a waterproof uh, container, but it's a 12 volt system. Okay, and 12 volt systems do pretty well, like in your car, when they get submerged with water or underwater and there's no shorting out of anything on the board because it's such a low volt deal. Um, the biggest worry you would probably have looking at the design is the battery, just like any kind of like um, LiPo battery for your computer, your cell phone, your RC car, boat or plane or helicopter, that type of deal. I'm an RC guy too. Um, it's encapsulated like in a shrink wrap plastic. You get all that wet um, through a dunking, like if you drop it in the lake, probably gonna wanna replace that $50 battery. The gun itself's gonna be fine. Take the stock off, open up the GCU, put it under a dry fa a fan overnight in a dry area like inside your home with the air conditioning running. It's gonna dry out and, and it's gonna be fine. And you probably just wanna check the rest of the gun for some basic oiling, clean your barrel, whatever. So I did wanna give you that, uh, that blanket as well. So, um, you know, a lot of surprises here. It, it's been a profound couple of weeks. All right, so um, let me talk performance a little bit, and then we'll get into uh, then we'll get into the tuning. So, like I said, it comes shooting 30 foot pounds with a 16 grain, 23 foot pounds with a 1343, 19 foot pounds with a 10.3 or the 1034. And, I, and granted, I've only been able to do it at 25 yards so far. You'll see a full review of this at 50 and 100 yards um, out on my other channel, AEAC Home. But I got to tell you guys, this is a good time to, to have some housekeeping. My field is flooded. It's been flooded for a month. Uh, ever since right on the backs, when, when I reviewed the ottoman, the water was coming up to me on the bench. And it, and it, but it's been totally flooded ever since. We had like two or three hurricanes in a row. We had a great week. It was drying out all week, and now we got rain again today and tomorrow. I talked to the homeowner where I filmed, the landowner, and it, it is drying. The water is subsiding, and it's moving in a good direction. So, But I won't be able to get out there and do the full review on this until that dries out. So keep an eye to the vlog. The other channel, AEAC Home, some companies have given me some, I call them smalls, some little projects to do here around the house to keep you guys informed and entertained. So there's going to be that. So just uh, be prepared for that. But here at 25 yards, I had with that JSB 16.2 grain launching at 30 foot pounds, really good performance, five shot groups. Um, with that uh, 1343, good performance, five shot groups moving at 23 foot pounds. And it loved, it loved that little 10.3 air arms on, uh, on low power. Okay. Um, I, I did my own tune and I saw a little over 40 foot pounds of energy with the H&M uh, the pile driver, which I believe is a 21 grain. Yeah, it's a 21 grain football. I don't even, I think H&M has discontinued this, which is a real shame because I'm starting to see it do well. I saw this do well in the Avenger. I, I've seen it do well in this Lothar Walther polygonal barrel. Um, at over 40 foot pounds of each, I put 10 of these, 40 foot pounds and 177 on a dime at 25 yards. I, I fired the, that's a 13 shot magazine, put 10 in it, wanted to see if it would do it, it did it. So 
You talk about versatility in a 177. I got it down to 19 foot pounds. You can do things in the tuning to get it significantly less than that. Obviously, there's markets in the UK and other parts of the world where they want less power. But you've got such a broad range of able to do with this thing as it is. And it's just, uh, it's extraordinary. Um, it liked these uh, Barracuda FTs, these uh, 10 threes. It liked them on low and medium power. On that note, um, it's funny with, you know, I haven't done much 177 stuff. I'm a 222530 guy, and I've been trained over the last three, four years that, you know, when you have a pellet that's shaped like that, it wants to be. 850, 860, 870 feet per second when you're talking 50 and 100 for that best stability. Um, if I'm going to push it to, um, you know, maybe I can get away with 900, maybe 910, and then you start to see the destabilization. I'm not seeing that in 177, and I don't understand the mechanics or the physics of why. Like I was shooting 10 grain pellets at 1,000 feet per second. And they're performing at 25 yards where I feel like any other air gun, I feel like I'm crossing the streams in Ghostbusters. Some bad boys could be flying anyway. So there's that too. Um, and, and I'm starting to get this mental image of the 177 as not being what I thought it was. And I say that because, you know, we're all into power, buck in the wind, good stability and, and downrange um, ballistics and energy transference at 50 and 100 yards in our air guns. And so we all, we're all thinking bigger all the time, but we don't always give thought to, you know, cross section of a pellet and ballistic coefficient of a pellet. You know, a smaller projectile moving faster that weighs the same as a larger projectile with a larger cross section in a bigger nose, a lower ballistic coefficient in theory, should outperform those rounds. And so I am dying for, for my field, not my field, the Yancey's field, to, um, to dry out so I can go and test that. Because to me, it kind of opens up a whole new, like I'm always looking to learn and share with you guys. And I'm always super careful that I don't mislearn and misshare with you guys. But I have a strong sense that I'm onto something here with this. You know, I'm not a trained army ranger sniper. I'm not a physicist, but the common sense guy and me married to my experience with what I do every day with this for this in this industry the last four years is telling me that a lot of us, me included, should be taking a much closer look at the 177 caliber load, especially now that we have access to something like this. Um, that is going to be able to generate more power than like any 177, I think. And on par or greater than, not all, but a lot of 22 cal precharged pneumatics, excuse me, and brake barrel air guns. It, it just opens up a new window. Let me, let me leave it at that and, uh, and, uh, and we'll move on. Um, this Lothar Walther polygonal barrel, guys, it likes slugs. It likes these NSAs. It did well with the NSA 12 and a half. It did well with the NSA 15 grain. It, it even did well with the NSA 20, 21 grain. At its OEM power settings, okay, I got those to work well with that low, medium, and high power. As it comes to you, no fiddling required. Of course, I wanted to push it as far as I thought I could push it. So I put like a 39 or 38 foot pound tune on it and started launching. The uh, 21 grain, <laughs> the 21 grain Nielsen Specialty Handle Slugs, guys, it's doing well at 25. So I can't wait to get this out at uh, and, and test it. God, this this the full review of this is going to be crazy because I'm going to have to show 50 yards with low power, medium, and high OEM, and then I feel like I'm going to need to show 100 yards or 50 yards with that 16 grain on high power or on my max power tune, which I'll share all this stuff with you in a minute. Um, and, and the same thing goes for these slugs, so I don't know how I'm gonna put it together.
But so the barrel likes slugs. I couldn't find any other 177 slugs. I know there's one other guy out there that makes them. I forget your name. I apologize. But in the comments that I've been putting on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, some of y'all have been saying, oh, this guy makes them too. And that's good. You guys keep giving, putting that information up there. That's how I learn. That's how the audience learns. But I don't have his stuff or her stuff, whoever it is. I don't mean any disrespect. Um, the gun, <laughs> the gun did really well with the Barracudas. Um, this is a 10 and a half grain. So you're going to want to try it at 19 foot pounds and 23 foot pounds, low and medium power. Okay. And it liked, uh, and it liked the FTs and pile drivers. Now this was kind of a shocker. So I have these from way back when these are the Crossman premieres, the uh, 10.5 grains. I think they sell these in a tin now. You can buy them at Walmart, you can buy them at your air gun dealers. It's a very inexpensive, hard antimonium infused type of pellet, um, low power. It liked them guys. It wasn't as good as the match stuff from H and N and JSB and Nielsen. But if you're on a budget and you want to go out like pesting 419 shots on one 250 bar fill, um, at 19 foot pounds, I mean, I mean, that's how you can make up for how much you paid for the gun. I think you guys see where, whoops, where I'm going for that one. That's why I think they got rid of these boxes, by the way. These things poop pellets like crazy. And it just, it just dropped one out right here. All right, let's talk about these shot charts. So uh, let's start on high power. So took it out of the box, cleaned the barrel, sighted it in, uh, put like 20, 30 shots for it, and then went straight into uh, getting shot charts for you guys. All right, so I put it on high power and here's the shot chart. 162 shots at an average across the 162 of 30 foot pounds of energy. Okay, so we're way more than most set, all 177s I'd venture to say and a lot of 22s in both PCP and brake barrel. Okay, with a 25 foot per second extreme spread. Okay. That tells me this is going to be good for 50 and 100 yard duty because anything inside of that 25 ES window, you're really not going to see a POI change out to 100 yards. Your experience may be different. I respect that. That's never been mine. As long as I'm inside that safety 25 FPS window, we're good. Okay. Uh, standard deviation 4.66. So 4.66 SD, 25 ES, 30 foot pounds out of the box. Formula One, right? So, no, so that, was a, that was a little bit of a no shit moment for me, I won't lie. And then I thought to myself, well, well now I got to do medium power. <laughs> so I went to the, uh, the 1343s, which coincidentally we talked about. It loves get medium power. Okay. Look at that bad boy. 278 shots at 23 foot pounds of energy. Okay, with an extreme spread of 27 feet per second and a standard deviation of 4.7 feet per second. That was a holy crap moment because, guys, I do all my squirrel hunting at, I try to keep them around 18, 19 foot pounds of energy, which is plenty out to 25 and 50 yards. And even in 177, that is hitting rock hard, even at those low energy levels. So this, this is still a lot. Uh, I know we, we get swept up in the velocity and the power game, but guys, a gun, a gun at 30 foot pounds or 23 or 19 that has a very settled down, you know, whip cracking, clean, non jarring shot cycle is really easy to be accurate with. And, and I, I've, I've, I've taken care of a lot of, a lot. I was actually on the phone with Air Guns of Arizona the other day on a Bluetooth and I had a little problem at the bird feeder with, um, you know, a little, a little problematic furry critter that figured out how to hop onto the air conditioning, bypass the cone, hop on, uh, onto the feeder. And, and while I was on the Bluetooth, I took care of him right in the jaw <laughs> and, and Robert goes, man, I heard that, you know, and it, it, it's not, you know, it's just like, it's like a baseball cracking home run. I mean, at 19 foot pounds, right? So, so then I, I have to be honest with you guys. I debated, I debated, do I really want to sit here 
and do a low power shot because I'm freaking out at the 162 shots on high, the 278 on medium. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to be here all freaking day. And I was, all right? But I did it. I did it for you guys because I love y'all. And here it is, 419 shots at 19 foot-pounds of energy, okay? Extreme spread was 43, okay? Standard deviation was 10.53. So being in touch, well, I should first say, the first 170 shots were perfect. Now, you can fine tune the tail of this through the tuning, and we'll, we'll get into that. But in order for medium and high to be what, what they are, this was the limitation on low power. Even then, at 25, 30 yards, that 43 ES doesn't make a damn bit of difference. So if you're pesting, if you're hunting, you fill it one time, you're good to go 420 times at 19 foot pounds. So, you know, that's, that's profound, okay? If this is the type of stuff that gets you excited. Speaking of getting excited, Daystate has a new magazine. So here's the one they've been running with for five or so years. Um, Air Guns of Arizona sent me one. Um, by the way, this all came by way of Air Guns of Arizona. I probably should have mentioned that. But um, it always sent me one to compare to their new magazine, right? To compare to the single shot tray. And I did. I did a 25 yard test where I did five shots with each. Five or ten, I can't remember. I think it was five. It might have been ten. But they all performed well, okay? The gun will come with a magazine. It's 13 rounds and 177, and it will come with a single shot tray. These magazines are magnetic, okay? Which means, this is kind of fun. One more taking out the lights. Mama's not gonna be happy, okay? Just put it in there, and then a little push with the finger. Whoop, and it just gets sucked right in. So it's, you know, it's, it's a nice deal to use. The uh, single shot tray works similar. It's got magnets on the bottom. It's got two little alignment posts and you just go over to the top and you drop it in and you're good and you're good to go. All three performed well. All right. So let me say that. Let me also say that I am having a serious love affair with this new magazine from Tastate. And let me tell you why. It's all metal. There's nothing goofy inside of it to get out of the, to, the, to get out of adjustment. There's no rubber O-ring in there that's gonna wear out over time and give me consistency issues with how it's grabbing the pellet. It's made of like all little cylindrical uh, billet aluminum little holes in there. So I can drop slugs in there, I can drop pellets in there, and it, and it just holds them all in the exact same way. Let me just tell you, this thing is super badass also because I was actually using it. You can actually use it as an accidental pellet head size color. For example, putting 5,000 shots through this thing, I found the odd pellet that wasn't perfect. You know, I'd be putting in like something like a redesign and I'd be filling up my little mag right here and, and they're all dropping to the bottom and I'll drop one in and I'll get that one that just, it drops in, but it doesn't go to the bottom. It just kind of stays on the top and I'm like, well, that skirt size is different or that head size is different and I just shake it out and I keep going. So that was kind of a nice little added bonus with this. But the way this works really simply, guys, you just drop down the little cover like that, all metal, okay? You just spin it like that. You drop in your first one and when you do, it just, it holds itself in place and then you just fill them all up. And then if you get like, if you get like one, if you drop one in there, that's like a bad head size, I would just do this and just give it a shake and out it would go. And it was amazing. I could put, I, and what else is neat about this that you don't necessarily get with these old design, older designs is I could put five in here, three in here, seven in here. The spring doesn't care. And it just, it always worked well. So this is a very welcome and uh, warmly received upgrade from uh, Daystate. I don't know if you bought this gun, what magazine you're gonna get. My guess is they're gonna run these till they run out, run these till they run out, and then you're gonna get one of these. But this is good, this is next level. All right, so there's that on the, uh, on the magazine. 
Um, I do want to point out, I have my first thought, oh, Jim, my pinky so bad, detailing my wife's car like two months ago. And my, my joint has been kind of swollen. And it reminded me of like my grandparents' hands. They had like the spoon hands where all their knuckles were swollen from like arthritis and stuff. And if you're the guy or gal and you want to enjoy shooting that suffers from arthritis or you have the shaky hand or it hurts, you know, and you still want to enjoy air gunning, that's how you cock the gun. There's no spring. There's no, there's no spring in it at all. Uh, so, so there's that. Cocking is really smooth. Um, you know, I do have a complaint. I'm going to share a complaint, <laughs> all right? This is a big, big gun, all right? It, it, like, you know, I don't have like, you know, little teeny, teeny, tiny man hands. You know, I'm, I'm five and a half feet tall, 180 pounds. I have like medium, I, wear, I buy medium and large when I buy gloves and stuff. And this is big in here. So this isn't going to be for everybody. And this is tall in here. Like, I get it. You got to house like a GCU and some other stuff and you got to house a battery. But th this is not going to be for everybody. It was fine for me because thankfully they moved the trigger far back enough in here. But if you're a really, really tiny gal or, or dude, you know, you might not find this um, appealing. All right, but um, it's well balanced. It is narrow, you know. It feels, it feels good. It doesn't feel like, you know, some of these guns that are just o overdone. And it, you know, it, it has a good feel in the hands. You can hold it really steady. But I feel like this is more of a... Um, a bench rest competition gun, or if you wanted to put a like a bipod on here, this would make a great field and prairie gun, especially if you wanted to reach out and touch something, if you know what I mean. But it's big, and it, it, at 11 pounds with all this stuff on it, it's heavier. Now that being said, this scope, this MTC um, F1, I think they call it, Cobra F1, King Cobra F1, this is not the lightest of scopes out there. This is a six to 24 by 50. It's good, it's been good for me, it's got good glass. The turrets behave like they were supposed to. I will say the AO ranging is off at 25 yards focused. It was saying 19 yards, but this might be geared more towards the really long range stuff. I would guess at six to 24 by 50, it probably is. I never use more than 10X, even out to 100 in any video ever. Um, but this is probably for like bench rest type stuff, and you can probably save some weight with that, but you're in about the 400 and you're about the $500 price point on these scopes, but I think they're on sale for $450 right now at AOA. If you want to grab one up, but um, but yeah, um, <laughs> let's talk about. Uh, should we talk about tuning now? Did I miss anything? I want to make sure I didn't miss anything before I move on to tuning. Oh, huh, I missed something. Warranty. Okay. Again, let me circle back. This gun's been in production since 2002. It's 18 years of old, 18 years. This tech, tech's been out for 18 years. I live on the forums. I live on YouTube. I talk to these manufacturers and their retailers on a daily basis. And um, the guns are reliable. I called uh, two retailers that have been selling these for a long time. Other than Air Guns of Arizona, I talked to their owners and I wanted to know, has the gun been good for you? Have you ever had one come back on you? And the feedback was, they've been great. We had one guy break his battery terminal, which I did too. We'll get into that. It's very easy not to break it as long as you just aren't ham-fisted and a moron. But um, they've been good guns. But the warranty globally is three years. If you buy it here in the United States, five-year warranty. I was looking, uh, this comes in this box, this little day state guy. But the uh, the distributor here, the the distributor for the United States uh, is five years on them. So you marry that warranty with a track record of them not being generally problematic. I haven't found anything. Yeah, there may be like the one or two people out there. But so you know, don't be afraid of the tech. And if you get it wet, no big deal. Okay. Okay, tuning. Um, where do I want to start with this? Let me start with some some. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to get into tuning. I lied. I'm going to show you how to change the power because that's important because I don't want you guys feeling like this gun's only for me if I'm going to spend 
four hundred dollars on a handheld pro on a factory handheld programmer you know that's not the case you can buy this gun on low medium and high power have it work with a lot and work at a high level with a lot of different pellets and slugs as it is and enjoy the tar out of it because that could literally keep you busy from now to eternity all right if you want to get into tuning because you have some specific needs you can but like i said this con this will come to you tuned like a little like when i say formula one you know how they put the work into making those things like mm -hmm. they've put they've done the work here okay so you've, there's an electronic display here on the side of the gun okay there's the safety right here on the back the safety is your master on off switch for the gun it will not do anything unless the safety is on so the first thing you need to do is flip the safety on you'll notice this light came on okay and it's going to time out and probably three or four or five seconds. Come on, go out. And no matter what I do, okay, that light is not gonna come back on. Day State, you know I love y'all, but if I'm, it'll come back on if I let it sit for like five or 10 minutes and then the light will come on for three or four seconds again. That is ridiculous, okay? If, if I'm getting 5,000 shots out of this battery and then I plug it into the wall and it's still full, okay, you can give me a light that, that stays on in the daytime and goes off if I want to do some nighttime shooting. And, and, it, and, and it should be able to be turned on or off by the end user. Just like your cell phone, you can control brightness. Your TV, you can control brightness. Your tablet, your computer. You know all of it we need to be able to control that brightness because this is this display is not the easiest thing to see when it doesn't have the backlight when it has the backlight it is beautiful and it, it is brilliant you can see it especially in the sunlight without the light um, but in the shade you know you, you got to look at it and, and I think just for a guy like me who's very particular natured really annoying that I can't have that light on all the time or off all the time if I owned this gun I would have the light on all i would have the light always on when the safety is off and then when i engage the safe or, or when i turn the safety on turning off the gun the light should go off that's just me i'm not the guy at the helm but that drove me freaking bananas because <laughs> I, I i love the gun and i want to see what the hell i'm doing okay so it's not going to come on because it hasn't been five minutes but you can program this from high, medium, and low power. Remember, it comes to you with the three maps already stored on the gun, okay? All you do is turn on the gun with the safety, okay? Open up the cocking lever, and right now it says it gives me my pressure, 232 bar, all right? And it says, it tells me that I'm on high power. By the way, this pressure gauge, guys, we, we got all excited about our EDMUs and stuff and our digital pressure gauges that we see like in these other brands. This thing is dead nuts on. I mean, it was like to the pound, you know, on my Omega tank, 250 bar, 250 bar, they read the same. That was cool. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm on high power, right? So here I take a high power shot. Boom. Now I want to look, my light came back on. Uh, so now I want to uh, um, I want to I want to tune it down. So all I do is I open up the cocking arm, okay, and I'm going to hold the trigger, okay. And I'm going to hold the trigger until it says program mode. See how it says program mode? I'm going to release the trigger and I'm going to hold the trigger again. Okay, now it's going to toggle through power level and magazine on off. The magazine on off is like a a counter. It tells you how many shots you have left in the magazine. If you turn it on, it'll count it down for you, tell you when you're empty. Okay, I don't care about that. I just care about the power level, which I can't see because the damn thing just timed out on me. All right, so on, open, okay. Hold down the trigger till it says programming mode, open the trigger, hold the trigger again, hold it down. It's toggling through power level, magazine on off. When it hits power level, let go of the trigger. Now, each time I hit the trigger, it changes the power level, high, medium, low. High, medium, low. Pick the one you want. Close the arm. You heard the little clunk from the actuator. Now it's in medium power. Okay, here's what it looks like in real time. Now I want to go to low power. There's low power. 
it's literally that easy changing back and forth between 30 foot pounds, 23 foot pounds, 19 foot pounds, and all those crazy, crazy amount of shots. Okay. <sighs> so tuning. Okay. I'm going to show you how to increase or decrease your power level. I'm going to sh share with you the great successes that I've had. I wanted to push the gun to its limits. I'm going to share with you what I learned communicating with Day State England. I, I was on the phone and WhatsApp with them quite a bit so that I didn't break their gun. Um, just like with a mechanical regulator, um, you can go too far. You know, mechanical regulators have limits as far as how many bar you can put to them. This one's electronic. It has limits as far as how many volts you can put to it, how much power you can push out of it, that kind of thing. Um, blanketing overstatement, when I was tuning, the factory said, tune it for maximum power and then back it off 10 or 15 feet per second or so. That's a safe place. I was able to get over 40 foot pounds out of it. I backed it off those 10 or 15 feet per second, and that got me down to 38 foot pounds of energy. And here's the shot chart, 45 shots at 38 foot pounds of energy with a 28 foot per second extreme spread. And that was super, super easy to do. Okay. Standard deviation was 6.99, right? Uh, average, 1,032 feet per second with the JSB 16.20 grade. So cooking, but accurate at, uh, at that 1,032. And that high power tune worked well on the slugs. It worked well on the JSB uh, 1620. So, you know, if you really want to ratchet things up, and that's what, that's what you're hearing right now, by the way. By the way, you can go in and the factory's high, medium, and low power you can make each one of those what you want. So you can put your own three maps on. You can use what they do. You can change just one of them like I did. The low and medium I was fine with. I wanted to ring it out, see what it was capable of. So I went in there and I just changed the high power. It does not affect the other two, what you do in that. Okay. Um, I'm going to get into some rules of tuning. And it's really easy. There's only a couple things you got to fool with. But I want to give you like another blanketing um, over overstatement, excuse me. I've been here a while, I'm gonna get some water. <clears throat> okay, here's the blanketing overstatement. Before you attempt any tuning on your own, okay, this is really important. If you have heard nothing else in this video and you're, and you're taking notes and writing some things down and some you aren't, write this down, highlight it, put an asterisk next to it. The first thing you need to do when you buy this gun, if you buy a programmer, if not, don't worry about it, because Daystate has this information saved for each gun at the factory in the UK. Okay, you need to go to either um, Air Guns of Arizona's channel on YouTube, or you need to go to Michael Wentz's channel on YouTube. Michael Went is the owner of the Air Gun Nation Forum. He's also competed and won at very high levels with this gun. The guy won himself a ton of money in 2018. Um, kicked a lot of butt in a lot of events. He has, okay, both of these YouTube channels, uh, Michael's is, I think he's just changed it to Air Gun Nation. It was addicted to air. So check both of those. But AOA as well, they have videos out there, good videos that I used and learned from on, you have to go in the gun um, with the programmer, and I'm going to show you how to hook it up and all that. <clears throat> and um, and you have to write down, you have to access and write down all of the original factory values for that high, medium, and low power. Okay, the factory calls it power setup one, two, and three. That's high, medium, and low. Those are the high, medium, and low stored programs on the gun. Each one of them will have, okay, a set parameter of numbers that you need to write down and record and save it forever. That way, if you screw your gun up in tuning, you can just grab your program or go right back to them and you're right back to where, where you started, okay? That's, that's a lot of the beauty in this, okay? That's also really nice because maybe you found something that worked really good but you wanna change it, all right? You can write down those numbers that worked really good, and if the change isn't what you wanted, you can go back to it like super easy, okay? That's the first thing you wanna do, all right? 
once you've accomplished that, um, then you're ready to start doing your own tuning. Now here's some blanketing overviews on tuning. <clears throat> I'm used to having to control regulator, to have that mental uh, uh, image of regulator pressure, uh, hammer, hammer spring, dwell and hit and rebound and all of these things and some of the fine tunings you get in the FX guns. So all of that guys compartmentalize, the gun's gonna do that for you. That MCT and GCU is gonna do that for you, okay? You basically only need to change three parameters. Okay, I'm spitting on the gun, okay? In high power, for example, okay? There's a hot, in high power, high power column, there's a high, medium, and low pulse length setting, which you can think of that on your shot chart, okay, is high, medium, and low, okay? All you're gonna do is go in and set up that high, medium, and low point. I'm gonna set it up here, I'm gonna set it up here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm all done, and the computer's gonna do the rest, okay? That's the beauty in this. It was so quick learning how to, just learning how to tune it, go test and come back because of that sort of thing. The computer does a lot of the work for you. That's called pulse length, all right? So that's the one thing that we can change. You can act, you're gonna wanna access or change pulse length in high power, medium power, and low power. Each one of those maps has a high, medium, and low pulse length to give the computer an image, a beginning, a middle, and an end, if you will. You set up the points, it connects the dots for you, you're ready to rock and roll, okay? That's a fine-tuning adjustment to the gun, a fine-tuning. I found 10 foot-pounds of energy on a 30-foot-pound gun in the fine-tuning platform. When I talk to Daystate UK, that's what they call it, okay? A coarse area of tune is voltage. Okay, um, I never fiddled with voltage. Okay, there's capacitors in here that bring that 12 volts up to 60 volts. All right, so it's not one of those things you want to put your tongue to. All right, and um, and you know I, from what I understand, talking to the factory, um, Michael Went, who's done a lot of tuning with this gun, you really only need to get into the voltage. If you want to bring the whole scale down, for example, this gun works really well at high and medium power and it works pretty darn good at low power. If I wanted to shift that whole scale down so that it worked better in the low power solar system, that's when I can start bringing voltage down to fine tune with that. Voltage is not really something you want to go really higher on because you're overworking the capacitors the valves, the hammer, remember it's all electronic, okay? And, it, and it's gonna come to you in a really, really, really good way. All right, now before I start taking stuff apart here and showing you how to do this, all right, I want you to look at this chart I made up for y'all. Okay, so circle back to, I'm in my high power column, I wanna tune high power, and I have my high, medium, and low, my beginning, middle, and end, pulse lengths that I'm gonna change. Okay, it's really important that when you change those, change them each equally. So if I'm in high power and I wanna change my high, medium, and low, put them, increase them each by 50 or 100 or 100, 200, whatever it is, do it to each one of them, the same, okay? It's really important. And the reason that's important because you remember that guy, um, Alan DeVille at the factory for 35 years tunes all these? He's done all the hard work for you setting up the gun to get in a really good, good space. So you want to take that and you want to work from that. All right, work from that goodness. We're going to go all up together. We're going to go all down, down together, all right? In, in this shot, this, this isn't a shot chart, but this is a, it's a teaching aid that's representative of that. So if you look over on the left, that's FPS. You guys are used to that. What you're not used to on the bottom, those aren't like shots like shot number one, two, three, four, five. Each one of those is a 10 shot group. So one is a 10 shot group, two is a 10 shot group, three is a 10 shot group, okay? You notice on the bottom I, I, I say pulse value, each. So 
Number one is my pulse value um, at the OEM settings. So we got that high power pulse value, high, medium, and low, that, that beginning, middle, and end. I know I sound like a broken record player. I want to make sure that that's really clear. Okay, but that's 10 shots, all right? And you'll notice where the velocity is. I took each one of those pulse values and I moved them up by a value of 200, okay? And you can see my velocity came up in number two. Okay, that's the average of 10. I moved it up another, I moved each of the three up another 200. And I got to a value of three, or, or, or there, there's three. And you'll notice each time I move those three values up a, a, a value of 200, okay, my velocity's coming up and up and up and up. Now you'll see this one here where it didn't come up the same as the other, others. I moved that one up 100 across the three, a value of 100 pulse length because I thought I was nearing the top. And something the factory told me is you're gonna, you're gonna near the top and then you're gonna start coming back down again. But it's not healthy for the gun to live at the top. It's hard on, on, on the hardware, all right? So you wanna get to the top and you wanna back off a little bit. But I wanted to run this so you guys could see what that looks like. I increased each one of these 10 shot values down here by an increment of 200 across the three pulse lengths I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? And you can see how it comes up, 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 up. And now I'm shooting 1,050 feet per second with a 16.20 grain, all right? Zinging. And then it starts to become not effective and it, and it comes and it, uh, you know, it tails off. I start to lose velocity, okay? But I wound up backing those pul that pulse off like 200 or 400 or something, that 10 or 15 feet per second. And now the gun is living happily in that 38 foot-pound range, um, which is a good place for it to live. I do want to say the shot cycle is super clean. It is super clean and settled. I've showed it to you here several times, up around that 38, 39 foot-pound range. But that's something you want to remember. Go up incrementally across the three till you get to your high and then back it off a little. That's going to be a really safe, reliable place for your gun to live. Okay, that's all the general rules. So how do you tune it? Okay, first thing you gotta do is you gotta remove the battery because you have to remove the stock. And the stock doesn't come off without removing the battery. So you can take either a screwdriver, a nickel, a dime, something like that. And right in the handle here, you see a little tab right there. I'm gonna try to do it to where you guys, whoa, where you guys can see it. There it is. You just use that to pry, to pry this up. And there's my battery hiding in there. All right. Trying to put things back where we are here so you guys are, whoa, still screen center. All right. So when you handle this battery, handle it with care. <laughs> I'll show you why here in a second. All right. It's connected by a little connector right there. Okay, when I separate the battery from the connector that runs to the circuit board. Don't pull on the wires, just pull on the connector. All right, I have a feeling that somebody before me got on, uh, did that. I, have, I don't have a problem accepting blame for when I break shit. I don't think I broke this, but it broke. So you disconnect those and then you very gently just slide out the battery. And there it is, these are 50 bucks. Um, this is what I mean, see this plastic wrap? Like if that gets submerged, like if you drop this thing in a pond for five hours, you're probably gonna want a new battery because that moisture is gonna get in there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, no biggie, all right? And then you're gonna be left with this little cord sticking out of the handle, all right? Now it is safe to remove the stock screw because when I lift the stock off, it'll all just pull it, it'll all pull off, all right? The stock screw is a gigantic eight millimeter. It's just one of them. Oh, I'm getting hungry. I gotta get to this tuning so I can get something to eat. I do wanna mention, as long as I'm staring at the trigger, the trigger, all of those adjustments, those like six adjustments I gave you earlier, are all, um, they're all accessible through the trigger guard. There's little holes in it. See the holes? Super nice touch, but I didn't have to do nothing with it. It's perfect. Five ounces is going to be light for a lot of people, especially for hunting. I'd probably bring it up to about, 
you know, 15, 16 ounces, maybe a pound for hunting, pound and a half. Okay, take out your little bolt. But this is great for bench work, all right? And I'm just gonna lift off the stock and you'll see the wire here, kind of pulls through. And there you go, there's your naked day state. All right, I'm gonna set that stock aside. Okay, so here's that L LCD display. Okay, nothing's gonna work now because I've got the battery disconnected. I will show you this. Okay, these little solder points on here, one of them broke. Okay, I, my battery started working intermittently, so immediately I started thinking, okay, I got a goofy connection somewhere. One of these broke. I resoldered them, I put them back together. It was really easy for me to do just because of my RC days. But just be mindful of that. This is something you want to be delicate with. They come with nice shrink wrap over it. Here's a new one. Um, here's a new one from the factory with some O-rings. The reason I got a new one is because one of y'all is going to win this gun and this scope and this programmer. This is all part of a review discuss win that's going to be held over at the Argon Nation forum. So more on that later. But I got a good one for you. This one's been good. I wanted to keep using it for all, all of my testing. Okay. So then you're left with this, this guy here, okay? Well, I need to be able to plug my programmer into the circuit board, okay? So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take our little flathead screwdriver and the side without the window, all right? Let's see if I can do this where you guys can kind of see it and I'm not gonna have an accident. It looks pretty good, all right? I'm just gonna unscrew these guys it's three screws to access the GCU and the gun control unit. And this is also the same procedure you're going to go through if you drop this in the swimming pool. You're going to want to open everything up, dry it out, clean it out. All right, so there's one, two. Set this right there. And this three. Okay, a little piece of plastic comes right off. All right now you can access you can access the access port right which is right which is right there at the tip of my screwdriver okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my programmer and this this little male right here fits this little female right here on the circuit board I'm gonna plug it in <clears throat> where's my screwdriver give that a little gentle push don't want to break the wires okay and I believe I'm in yep I'm in okay so that's that so now what I need to do is I got to plug my battery back into the gun otherwise none of this stuff's gonna work right and I got this so I got this little cord sitting over here I'm gonna plug my battery back in okay and this is how I tune the gun okay you notice my little light came on good to go I actually set this up. I put like a little, put like a little screwdriver under this deal. Okay, put this battery down in here, right? And you can leave the programmer attached to the gun while you tune. There's no reason to take it apart. It's not sensitive to that. The programmer has its own onboard rechargeable battery that's via USB. Okay, but just remember, the first thing you're going to do when you get your gun, if you buy a programmer, is plug all this in. Go to those two videos at AOA or Air Gun Nation or Addicted to Air, whatever Michael's calling it now on his on their YouTube channels. And you're gonna take all the values that are in the gun and you're gonna save it to the programmer and you're gonna write them down so that, uh, so that you always have them. All right, so that's important. But this is how you're gonna program the gun. And this is how, like I, I was literally making changes and just, you know, just shooting the gun like that on the bag. They're all zinging down the same hole. 20 foot pounds, 30 foot pounds, 40 foot pounds, it doesn't matter. So that speaks that speaks a lot to the harmony that's going on in here. And that's one of the big things, you know, when you're tuning mechanical, which I'm not digging it, I love it. I really enjoy it and it's fun. You're searching for those little nuggets of harmony as you go. This kind of just finds them for you. It does all the hard work of getting you there. Either that or it's just because the hardware of the gun they've done a good job designing it and putting it together but it's very happy <clears throat> okay so um, what I'm going to do is make sure that my safety is off because remember 
uh, turning the safety on turns everything off. Turning the safety off, that's your master on switch. Okay, I'm gonna grab my little programmer here. And this is, this is gonna be tough for you guys to see and follow along. So I'm gonna take a pic, I'm probably gonna clean this up, put it on Airgun Nation forum, um, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing, so that you guys always have a record of it. There's already a thread started over at the Airgun Nation forum on this gun and my learnings with it over the last two weeks. It's stickied so you can find it. Go there, we'll get this up there, and this will give you the sequence of how you access and change those three pulse lengths I was talking about. Three pulse lengths in high, three in medium, three in low. All right, and remember, we move them all up and down in the same amounts, right? So we don't mess with all that nice hard work of finding the balance and harmony that the factory found. All right, so the first thing to do to turn on the programmer is you hit this little up, this little up arrow, okay? And it comes on, day state power. Okay, MK5 setup menu, used for MK5 guns, main, main menu. This is an MK5 design. This is what we want. We're like, yeah, we want that. So this is the enter button. So you hit enter one time. And it says MK5 power setup one, all right? Now power setup one is for high power. Power setup two is for medium power. And low is for low power, okay? Let's say, I so if I wanna access one, power level one, I'm gonna hit enter, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I can use these up and down arrows and toggle through the different power. There's power three, there's power, whoops, there's power two, there's power one. That's how I enter to either C or tune high, medium, and low power. Super easy, okay? I think I kinda like this screwdriver here, I'm gonna leave it. All right, uh, once I get to the power level I want, one being high power, I'm gonna hit the enter button, okay? Now I'm in it, all right? And what you're gonna see, well, I was gonna use a screwdriver as a pointer. That's not gonna work. Okay, what you're gonna see is this little 3,365 with a little US next to it, okay? And you're gonna see high pulse length. Remember, we talked about the high, medium, and low within each power setting, the beginning, middle, and end, that's what that is, okay? So if I'm gonna change this value by 50, if I'm gonna add 50 to it, take 50 away from it, I gotta do that for the medium and the low pulse length as well. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So um, it says 3365. Let's say I wanna make it 3355. Okay, just use the little arrows here. One, oh no, I need to enter it first. Enter, yes, I wanna change that. So you see the little cursor starts flashing on it? Okay, just use a little arrow. And I, I deleted my 3365. I wanna make a 3355 by hitting the 55 twice and hit enter. The little beep confirms I've changed it, okay? Then I would need to hit the arrow and go down to mid pulse length, change that one by five. Low pulse length, change that one by five. But I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go back up to high. I'm gonna hit enter to access it. I got my little flashing cursor, back arrow once, twice, change my uh, 55 back to a 65. Whoa, hit enter, okay? That's literally all you're gonna do. Okay, so you're gonna go in there, you're gonna, I recommend changing values by 50 or 100 or 200, something that's easy to remember, that's gonna make a significant change, make yourself a chart, go as high as you can, watch when it curls off, come back, whatever. You're gonna tune it to your ammo. You tune it to your, your shooting style, all right? So I've gone through all of these, right? I've gone, I went into high pulse length. I went into mid pulse length. I changed that. I went into low pulse length. I changed them each, like, let's say by 100, right? Now I want to transfer that. Now I want to reprogram the board with that, all right? So what I'll do, um, okay. Once I've done all that, I'm gonna to come to this down arrow over here. I'm gonna hit it five times. One, two, three, four, five. And it says program right there. I'm gonna hit enter. And did you hear this beep? And did you hear the gun go clunk? I just programmed it. It's literally that simple and that fast. So if you can imagine me out there on the bags being like, all right, well, I'm at like 33, I'm at, you know, all these three values for high power, I go in there and I add like 100 to each of them, you know, which takes like 30 seconds. 
go down to program, hit enter, you know, clunk, clunk, I'm good to go. Now I can shoot at that. And the computer is going to do all the hard work for you of connecting those dots. I mean, mind blown. <laughs> all right. You can just unplug this thing if you want to. It's not going to hurt anything. You can plug it in, unplug it while you're working. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, now, if I want to shut off this machine, it'll go off itself after a timeout after a while. But if I remember, you just go on the up arrow. No, it's not the up arrow. Oh, it's this, it's this up arrow. <laughs> until three times, until it says turn off. Hit enter. And now the machine is off. So that's literally all there is to program it, guys. So what you can do to keep track of this is I believe Air Guns of Arizona has these. Um, I know Michael Went, the owner of the Air Gun Nation Forum, has these. I'll see if I can get him to put these on that thread so you guys can like download it. But you'll, you'll want these worksheets because they make this so easy. And let me tell you how, how this works. So this top half of the worksheet, that's just how the gun comes to you, right? You're going to write all this down. You're going to save it for later. You're going to save it in your programmer. All right, you've got two video, good videos to take you through how to do that. I don't need to rehash that, they're done. I just wanted to show you the basics of how incredibly easy this thing is to tune, okay? And then you've got like where you can, you know, you pick a pellet like I did, and then power setup one, two, three, which is high, medium, and low power. You know, and you write it all down, and, and, and you have like your OEM settings, right? So you just set that aside. Okay, now I wanna start fiddling with stuff, right? So the only thing I cared about on this whole sheet, I printed a bunch of these. You see the test one, okay? I literally went in high power, okay? Um, which was shooting a JSB at 960, the JSB 1620 at 960. And I went into each of those pulse lengths, that high, medium, and low pulse length, like I just showed you, under high power. And I added 200 to each of them. So it got me to 2465, 2300, and 2150. Okay, and that brought my velocity to 960 feet per second with a 15 foot, a 15 fuck it, not a 15 fuck it, a 15 foot per second extreme spread. So that was test number one. So then I come in here again and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, well, let's turn that up a little bit more. So I went back in there with that same JSB 1620. I added another 200 value to each of my pulse, pulse lengths to now I'm at 2665, 2500, 2350. Lo and behold, now I'm at 986 feet per second, <clears throat> okay? These were ten, little 10 shot averages I was doing, by the way. Still a 15 foot, a 15 foot per second extreme spread, holy crap, okay? Well, then now we're gonna, we're gonna really like, we're gonna really man up, and I added 200 more to each value. 2865, 2700, 2550. Now I'm at 1,007 feet per second with that JSB 1620. I'm still going up, <clears throat> gun's still happy, okay? Test number four, added another 200, same pellet, JSP 1620, 3065, 2900, 2750. Now I'm at 1,021 feet per second, all right? And I think this is the one where I actually added, yeah, I added 100, because I went from 1021 to 1029, so about 10 feet. So I just went and added a value of 100 to each of those, and then I'm like, well, it's still going up, so then I got crazy and I put on the, the 200 again, added 200. And that's that's this shot chart where you see it's got a nice curve and that little that little dip in the middle of the curve, that's where I added 100, okay? Here we go, 200 value, 3465, 3300, 3150. Now I'm at 1,046 feet per second with a JSB 16 grain. And remember, we got 22 JSBs, a 1435 and a 1589 that are lighter than these two and 22 cal that shoot in a lot of air guns 800 850 900 feet per second right this thing's got some got some muzzle okay so that was uh that was my max test six was my max okay because what happened is i went into a, a seventh test i added 200 again and as you saw on that chart <clears throat> okay it leveled off added 200 then I was at 400. I stopped gaining power. I'm still at 1,046. But what was interesting is my extreme spread dropped to six feet per second from 15, which I liked, but we don't want to push the gun that hard. 
So I wound up backing off of it a little bit. Okay. Uh, test eight, I backed off at 100 from that, and it dropped me to 1045, which um, is not enough of a drop from 1046. Okay. Then I went to test nine. I'm calling this safe. Backed it off another 100. Now I'm back at 1033 on about a 1045, 1046 max. That was my 38 foot pounds by, where is, where is it? That was my 38 foot pounds by 45 shots with an extreme spread of 28. I mean, it's easy. And since I wrote each one of them down and I have them forever, I can go back to whatever I want, whenever I want in, let's, if you put a stopwatch on me, a minute. I mean, and, and I think that that's, guys, that's, that's significant. Um, and I'm going to circle all the way back to the front of this vlog where I said, I, I feel like I've had my head in the sand for 18 years because I don't see people, I don't see people like talking about this, but this is just extraordinary. And, and again, I have a feeling it's because of the price, you know, it's going to weed out a lot of people being able to afford that. But man, if Day State could ever get this tech down to, you know, an affordable price, I, I sincerely feel like everybody would own this. You know, everybody would buy one of these. Everybody needs to buy one of these things. I mean, this thing's unbelievable. Um, you, you know, you put it all together, the five-year warranty, the waterproof, the extraordinary trigger, the Lothar Walther polygonal barrel that I can put 1,500 shots at 1,000 feet per second to that won't hold any, won't hold any lead. You know, the gorgeous laminate stocks that these things are coming with, the battery that I put like 5,000 shots on, went to plug it in and the thing was still full. It's quiet with the moderator. Without the moderator, not so much. Now I will say this carbon fiber, it, it is dual ported up here at the, at the end. Um, so it does allow backflow in here to take advantage of the volume, but it really needs the moderator. I think these are 120 to 150 price point, these zero dBs. You can also get them at Air Guns of Arizona and other places, but day and night difference. Like it sounds like a freaking cork gun with this thing on here, like at 19 and 23 foot pounds. Um, 30 and 38 foot pounds is not, a, it's not loud at the report, but it's loud when the pellet hits the target 25 yards away. Like when you put it into a squirrel's cheekbone, <laughs> Robert. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I heard it too. I'm sure everyone else did. So, um, you know, damn guys. It's been, it's been a, a, a revealing couple of weeks. So, um, with that, don't forget, review, discuss, win. When y'all is going to win this actual gun, this actual scope, the programmer, and a bunch of other goodies over at the Air Gun Nation forum. That'll happen after I get out and do the full review at 50 and 100 yards. As soon as my field defloods, uh, there's a sticky topic over there so you guys won't lose it. I won't forget about it. That'll kick off the 10 day event. It's a simple lottery based uh, giveaway where you pick, you pick a number, enter it in the body of the thread over there and that's literally all there is to it. And this is gonna be, I can't think of a giveaway that that was going to be valued at, this is probably going to be a 30, this is probably a $4,000 giveaway. You'd be crazy not to put your name in the hat for that one. The odds are good. We only have about 1,500 to 2,000 people enter these, enter these things at any given time. We do one every month, most months when I'm not flood, flooded out. And, uh, but th this is next level. Um, so anyway, I sound like a broken record now, so I'm going to go. Don't forget, if you're new here, you can follow me on uh, Instagram, Hooked on Air. You can follow me on Facebook, Hooked on Air or AEAC. Guys, I got to tell you, with 70,000 of you following me on the big channel, 14,000 of you following me on here, I'm kind of surprised that only about 5,000 of you follow me on Instagram. Guys, that's all the juiciest stuff. That's all my juicy pictures and tech notes as I go and learn coming up to these videos. So if you want to be real time, and get the undistilled stuff down, not two hours into a vlog like this when I'm brain dead. As I learn it, get on that Instagram, Hooked on Air, follow. There's lots of great stuff there. Facebook, there's uh, about 15,000 of you following me there. That's more industry announcements, what am I up to, press releases for new products that are coming out. 
you know, if, if you're not opposed to Instagram and Facebook, you'd be crazy not to follow in those two places. Uh, you know, and then the two, the two uh, YouTube channels where I hang out and uh, Airgun Nation too. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to end it right there. As uh, soon as I get the full review done, I'll see you guys again um, then. Then, otherwise, uh, I'll probably see you here later on this week with some other shorts here on this channel or on ACA, ACA Home. Love y'all. Thanks for watching.